Assalamualaikum, thank you for coming. And I'd like to thank uh, Kuch Khas for giving me this opportunity. We'll get into the presentation straight away. Uh, uh, you may be aware of, of the topic for today, the, the traditional view of art, and I'll be explaining what I mean by this. As a preamble, I would like to state the basic premise upon which this presentation is based, which is that uh, the art of any culture reflects that culture's view of quote-unquote reality, how it defines what is real vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the reality of the human being and the reality of the world around us which uh, one would say is it's that culture's worldview. Just take one example of, uh, from what is seen as the contemporary understanding of art. Often it is said that it's a, uh, the self-expression of the artist. So, <coughs> and we can see that the roots of the ultimate roots of this conception or view of art as the self-expression or celebration of the artist or man as such is rooted in uh, Renaissance humanism in Europe. And in Renaissance humanism first of all starts by putting man at the center of the universe and as the measure of all things. And then it defines man in a certain manner and first of all, obviously, when it puts man at the center of the universe, he replaces God at the center of the universe. And then he is defined, man is defined in terms of man himself. That is, that it is a body and a soul, a personality, without any connection to any higher principle. Thus, art, therefore, naturally follows that uh, it's one of its main contents then becomes the human personality and its reflections of society or its expressions of itself and so on and so forth. This talk is divided into two parts. Uh, part one would present the worldview upon which traditional art is based and the next part uh, would be a presentation of some of the salient features of this art. But first of all, I should define what I mean by the word tradition. So the word tradition in this talk is used in a particular sense and not in the everyday sense of signifying something connected to the past. Normally that's how when you say today. There's a lot of confusion. Uh, one often uh, takes it to mean as something which is from the past. But in the sense that I, I'm using this word tradition, it signifies once again a worldview, a way of being, where both nature and man are seen as having their roots in and as manifestations of an absolute, infinite and perfect divine source. So this sort of a worldview changes the conception of everything. Here we are talking about uh, really pre-modern modes of thought, which in our culture are still alive. We are sort of a schizophrenic mix of modernity and tradition. Uh, and the whole lot of uh, in the manifestations of traditional cultures can only be understood in connection with uh, this worldview. Otherwise, what's, uh, there are all sorts of misconceptions. So now we come to architecture. With this particular example of uh, Christianity has the concept of the heavenly Jerusalem. And this particular manuscript <coughs> really is uh, from where this is taken. Uh, records uh, a saint's <coughs> vision in the spirit, a saint was taken up to heaven and had this vision of the heavenly Jerusalem. So that this particular manuscript is about that particular vision. And it has 12 gates connected to the 12 apostles and Christ as represented as the lamb, I think, and the angel measuring out the courtyard and so on and so forth. Everything is very symbolic and there are descriptions and whole treatises on this concept. The way things eternally are in heaven. It can be expressed in terms of a garden or of a building. And 
Islamic tradition, both are found. Therefore, the, the, the temple, not the temple, the tomb is offered in a garden. Obviously, first one has to define a universe because the universe is ordered, it's harmonious. So, even a page is a universe which has to have a boundary, a limit, uh, and then it has to have these two balance. The geometry here signifying the structural element or the and, and, and then the arabesque or the floral motifs would be the flowing or the you know, and just within the geometry also if you see that the, the center would reflect the absoluteness aspect is only one center but it repeats as in the four corners because it's also infinite the absolute is infinite and absolute and at the same time so I think uh, it can also be interpreted in that way. And now then how is it applied in art? This is a craftsman drawing from Multan. Now this whole form is flowing and there is no straight line. Behind this flow of forms there is an ordinary, ordinary uh, proportioning system. <coughs> that is what gives these forms a certain attraction and sort of intuit that there is some order behind this. I won't go into the details, but for example, I think it's self-explanatory that there is a hole. You start with a hole and then you subdivide it into parts. So every part is then related to that hole as being a subdivision of that one. This is a drawing of just the top portion of it. Why do you start? It's a good, just a marvelous drawing. Nothing really is arbitrary. Isse andar kasar na hove, nale rams fakar di. Isse andar kasar na hove, nale rams fakar di. Sanat bhi vich thodi bothi, challe lazat kar di. I at another place, the poet expresses the same message in his own words as to what he is doing. What is this poem about? Baad majazi rams hakani van vanadi kati. Baad majazi rams hakani van vanadi kati. Safrul ishq kitab banai sad chupi vich lati. Dekne me to ye ek sadi si lakdi hai. He also talks about the different levels of meaning in this poem. Jina talab ki se di hosi sun ki sa kush hosan. Jina jag ishq di sine jag savere rosan. Ye lagze jag par, he is playing upon the word jag. Yani ki jazamin lagate, jise ghi dahi banta. Jis ke dil mein wo catalyst hai. रोहानियत का तो वो फिर जब सुबह उठेगा उसको भी समझ आएगी कि असल में इसमें कुछ और है। To end these quotations from Sefer Bulugh with two verses, the first verse which I am going to show you now gives the ultimate message of the poem, which is self knowledge as a gateway to the knowledge of God. It uses a piece from the Quran where the Quran says that we are closer to Him than His jagged away. Nahnu akrabu aap ko kenda, ik dam dur na disda, os de dere andar tere, phir hai lodao jiska. Ultimately it's a journey within. And that's really the meaning of all traditional culture. And the second and the last word that I'm going to quote, outlines the method of gaining this knowledge or realization through the essential Sufic practice of zikr or invocation of the name of God or some other sacred formula of Amda. Galvich pha vamada dhatke zikro chik madani Galvich pha vamada dhatke zikro chik madani Himmat naal Muhammad baksha makhan aya jani That, that moment of transformation where a super saturated solution suddenly turns into crystal. Often that's how spiritual realization has been described by sages. 
then he's talking about that moment when that transformation will occur and something new will come. Thank you.